We want to take a closer look now at that major Supreme Court ruling that came down yesterday. As we reported, the High Court on a 7-2 vote upheld the Indian Child Welfare Act of 1978. ICWA priorita prioritizes placement of Native American children with Native families or tribes in child custody proceedings. Now, several adoptive parents and Republican-led states challenged the law, saying it was discriminatory based on race. The Oneida Nation was one of five tribes that intervened in the case in support of the government and the law. And we are joined now by the chairman of the United Nation, Tehasi Hill. So let's start with that first thing. Why were you one of the four tribes that intervened in support of the law? And what exactly does that mean your role was in this case? Yeah, uh, Glenn, thanks for that question. Um, at Oneida, I think we've been really, uh, uh, really um, forward facing and progressive uh, nation in. Uh, when it comes to implementing uh, federal law and things like that. So uh, we've been doing this for a long time. And so with all of our experience, we were uh, kind of selected and to join because of our experience in implementing the Indian Child Welfare Act. All right, there was a lot of support. You, you intervened on that, but 497 tribal nations, including the other 10 federally recognized nations in Wisconsin, 62 native organizations, 23 states, 87 members of Congress, 27 child welfare and adoption organizations, all signed into Supreme Court briefs supporting this law. Now, you're celebrating the decision, but you've also made the distinction that, that what was at stake here was a political distinction, not a racial distinction. Can you explain that? Uh, yeah, yes, definitely. You know, that was kind of the, uh, the one of the founding uh, tenets of tribal sovereignty is that relationship that uh, tribal nations have with the federal government. And in that, so with the, uh, the treaty making process, treaties are made from nation to nation and are the supreme law of the land. And so that's really kind of the, the, the founding of the government relationship with uh, tribal nations across this country is those treaties. And those are made between uh, political entities, not racial bodies. All right, the Indian Child Welfare Act came into existence because before that law took effect, 25 to 35% of Native American, I'm not telling you anything you don't know, I'm telling something for your audience here. Native American children were being taken from their families and placed with adoptive families in foster care or in institutions, and the majority were placed with white families or in boarding schools, and now we know what has come to light about those boarding schools in the past. But my question is this, so the climate back then different perhaps than the climate now, and the law put into effect addressed those issues, but does it account for situations? One of the challengers in the case had already adopted a native boy and was trying to adopt their half sister, which they was five years old and she had been with them since infancy, and the Navajo Nation opposed that. So does it now account for those types of situations? Because I would assume there are many situations. Uh, yeah, there are many, many, many situations when it comes to uh, uh, child placement and things like that in the in the child welfare system. And uh, I guess it would be a little bit tough to address them all here today. But in in most uh, most cases, uh, obviously, with the placement of children with uh, family members preference and then within the tribe and the tribal community at large, but sometimes there's just isn't uh, placement within the, that system too. So uh, eventually uh, the, the child could be placed outside of the tribe, outside of tribes themselves uh, into not native families. And that's just part of the process. Right. Uh, and and, and the, I think we're facing that nationwide, not only with tribal homes, but foster homes in general. Right, and, and, and that system looks like this today. I checked these numbers. Uh, Wisconsin Department of Children and Families data shows 491 of the 4,417 children in foster care in Wisconsin, 11% are Native American. And according to the United Child Placement Agency, there are more Native American children in Wisconsin in foster care than there are licensed Native American foster parents. So you folks have put out the call for more tribal foster parents. How tough is that to find? Uh, yeah, I think that's a challenge nationwide, uh, really trying to find foster homes. And so any chance that we get, we would like to speak and encourage, you know, uh, families to make their homes available and uh, go through the process, become uh, certified. And it's, I wouldn't say it's an easy process, but we're always trying to streamline and make things as easy as possible. But again, I think the paramount issue is the, the child's safety mm -hmm. and trying to make sure that that placement is, is correct. 
And, you know, and as it comes to language and culture and history, you know, there are many facets to that as well. Um, we have a, a long, long history with many different facets uh, from the, the tribal, uh, you know, longhouse to Catholic church and, and involvement and everything in between. And so there is a, a broad blanket that covers much of uh, the, our culture and our history and our how we live in this uh, contemporary society. Last question for you, Chairman, uh, and a quick one here. Do you think this is the end of this issue in terms of legal battles now that the Supreme Court has upheld it? Well, we would definitely hope so. Um, we did really uh, breathe a sigh of relief yesterday when the Supreme Court voted, you know, seven to two in support of ICWA and, um, and, and addressed the many of the larger issues that loomed over this case. And so we would hope to see that this uh, finally be put to rest. But um, with tribal sovereignty, it's really a tough challenge to really um, be that far ahead on, on any issue. So uh, we look will we stand ready to protect tribal sovereignty. Chairman, thank you so much for the time. Have a great weekend. Thank you, you too.